Yeah, as I was saying, that's going to be a tough act to follow because I look like one of those old guys sitting on the internet. It's time for another nap. On moreover, <laughs> the problem is that I'm not the main author of this work, so I'm presenting that on behalf of the team there. So my name is Jean Thury. So I've done some open flow work in the past. Um, actually, I would like to plug a bit more company. This is kind of a generic slogan, but we have been involved in SDN for a long time. You know, Glenn Cornett says that mostly with open flow. We have been less visible. In, with P4 and we were with OpenFlow, but we have been working internally and I'm going to present you some of the work we have been doing there with P4. On the team who did really the work, Alex Sony was the main person leading that on with a bunch of other people in our team there on some interns. Okay, so what are we talking about? We are going to talk about doing a functional simulator for network axis for some of the features there using P4. And that's part of when you developed a network ASIX fixed function pipeline, uh, you know, not necessarily programmable, you need to model those features. And we uh, want to use P4 as a language to describe those features, to model, to test them, and to simulate them prior to the actual implementation in Verilog and so on. And we talk about how we care about some accurate description of some of the low-level detail block of those hardware there, and how we can try to leverage BMV2, you know, the, there. And then I'm going to plug something differently. You know, I think you have heard some people from Google talking about using P4 as a specification language. And we like that idea as well, because we found that P4 is a pretty good language to specify our feature. Uh, you know, and now we are talking of new feature for function ASIC, so some small blocks there. And what we like about P4 is that there is a lot more formalism. The semantic is more limited, which is that if you were to describe the feature in plain text or describe it in C++, there is a zillion way you could do it. But with P4, there is one canonical way. And that is helpful because when those engineers share the same set of P4, they understand the same thing, you know, they talk the same language. So that's why we found it that's pretty good. But we want to go further on that. We want to take those bits of spec and to be able to compile them into model. On that, P4 allows us to do that because it's a programming language. And there is advantage to that. It removes duplication because now you don't know do the spec on the modeling separately. You just write it once. Those things won't diverge. And uh, later on, you may be able to do the reverse, which is you, you take your P4 and you automatically give respect for that, or maybe there are other tools there. You, okay. And so at the end of the day, you are going to use this P4-based specification of the feature to document the feature, but to be able to iterate it over the functionality to evolve it, and then to simulate the functionality on how it interacts with the other hardware block. So that's the idea there. So going through there, we had a bunch of challenges, and I'm going to talk to, about them in turn. So the first one is that, you know, how do you build a functional simulator of those features, you know, to simulate the hardware? Because currently the proof chain doesn't provide you that. And this is what the architecture my colleague came up with. So as a user, as a developer there, you are going to write some, some P4 snippet in ASIC.P4. And it's going to be merged with ASIC Arch P4, which are a more generic description of the rest of the switch. So those two merge, you compile, and then it goes into um, the, uh, the middle block. There, what we did is what we took B, uh, Z2 BMV2 and uh, to, uh, made it a library to include into the existing simulator. So we already have an existing simulator of the ASIC, we're adding a feature, so we don't want to re-implement everything in P4, so we just include BMV2 in there, hook it up, and then the snip set of P4 is going to interact with the rest of the simulator there. And so now we have a simulator, we can generate that packet, get packet out, see the packet work, and one of the nice features they have there is that they implemented the register level hardware detail. So they expose the low-level low register of the actual hardware, and this is hooked to the P4. And that allows you to verify if the register content is correct, use those register program, but also you could, uh, you know, hook your actual driver, software driver, directly to the simulator to exercise the hardware. So a lot of cool features there. Okay, next. Um, one of the gotcha we had was trying to specify the low-level uh, parser on some of the um, low level detail of how, um, you know, uh, header field are done in the hardware. So here I'm talking about some of the details there. Uh, when we talk to hardware, there is a lot of interesting optimization on where those 
uh, header field and metadata field are um, overloaded. And so you may have a field which is used for two different usage. And uh, I'll give an example for very common in hardware switch where you, your port number, well, if some bit is flipped, it's no longer a port number, it's a multicast group, for example. And here, I'll give you an example. We have those uh, field ID. There is two bit of type field, and then based on the type field, it could be either the top level, 6, 6, uh, 6 8, and 16 bit, or 15, 15 bit. You know, two different interpretation of that uh, uh, header field. And so, when you do P4, P4 will abstract all the way. You know, P4 said, you don't want to know the detail. You know, uh, we will do just simple header type, and that's good. Uh, and, and it's true that when you want to implement P4, you want the abstraction. You don't want to know the detail. But when it comes to uh, modeling and testing those things, we actually want to go there and know about the detail, deal with the ambiguity on being able to have test vector, which actually is the same test vector that we plug in the hardware. And so that's why those limitations of P4 are going to limit us. Uh, and in particular there, what we want to do is to have a union in your header, but P4, the spec says explicitly, no, 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 don't do that. Well, and so we try to do it without it, and this is the implementation. I hope it's readable enough. But some of the uh, features there is that when you describe your other field, because you don't have union, you will need to uh, replicate the type in the two substructures, uh, the ty uh, type one, type two. And so you hope that the two things are consistent with each other. And then when you do the parsing, you need to look at those bits. That's not so clean. Uh, and so we say, we can do better than that. And so this is what we came up. And so now we have the subtype there that don't include the type field. The type field is in the union. And when you're parsing, things are looked a lot cleaner. And not much more uh, change there, but look cleaner. And then, of course, there is need to change some of the rules of semantic around how those headers are parsed and valid. And it's mostly recursive, which is that, uh, you know, you, the validity of header depends on the validity of all the subfield. And so that's. At the end of the day, minor semantic change in the, the way uh, those validity rules apply. And uh, we found that the compiler can't do those things at those check at compile time, so it's all good. So the next thing we wanted to explore is the expressing low level um, feature of the matching block, in particular TCAM. And again, it's the same story. You know, P4 abstract everything. It's a, we have this table abstraction, it's all good, and you don't want to know what is underneath there. Well, except of course, we want to know what is underneath. And um, especially that, you know, we are dealing with TCAM, and TCAM has this interesting probability of where the order matters. You know, all the rules have an index, and the place here, you know, it's, it's matched in order. And um, for example, you may want to explore placement optimization. In a, you know, I did that when I was doing my input open for implementation. We we're trying to figure out what was the best order for different uh, workloads. And so then again, that wasn't very difficult. We did some change in the control plane API. We have no uh, index which tell you which uh, place to put the rule. On the matching API, the same. You return an index which tell you uh, the rule that you match, which index it is at. OK, so now we pretty much address all the challenge. So we're good, no? Um, OK, so we are done. End of the talk. Maybe a bit early. Uh, but we have time for questions. <laughs> oh, I'm good. I'm either it's so clear or either it's so obscure. Obscure. <laughs> I, I should probably talk to you later offline, but just a quick comment on I, I, I wrote this I thought a lot about this hit index thing, and it actually affects the it, it changes the controller's view of things, and it changes what an implementation is like. Often implementations with cuckoo hashing or multi-way hashing mm -hmm. like to move things around. Mm -hmm. And if you have a hit index, the implementation can either can't do that or, or so anyway, I have an article I wrote that I could send you a link to if you're curious that mm -hmm. it, yeah. It, yeah. these things have effects. Yeah, we, we haven't looked too much currently hash table on Aruba, but in a former life also I did some cuckoo hashing. I know what's what's happening on if you want to optimize those cuckoo hashing, you want to access all those details of where the rule are stored. Yes, same, same deal. Um, yeah, so this seems like you had a lot, lot of changes made to BMV2, the compiler, and like some semantics to the like semantic changes on the language. Um, uh, are you planning to maybe 
upstream subtleties or uh, oh, talk of the yeah, community? You're, you're asking them? a tough question there. Yeah. <laughs> um, first, I'm not the author of this work. I'm just presenting it. I wasn't involved. You know, they just dropped the, the slide on me and said, go present. <laughs> um, uh, but also, you know, uh, we are not academic research. We are working in industry, so I don't know. But mm -hmm. I will convey that message and say that uh, there are likely to be a well, uh, nice reception of that work. So I'll toss that to Ardik. Mm -hmm. I can't tell now he's probably sleeping at the time. Sounds good. Thank you. Well, it makes it easier for people to understand what the problems are, I guess, mm -hmm. you're dealing with, yeah. and then maybe they can help. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. 